As you become more familiar with using Excel, you'll find yourself relying on automated formulas, linking, or referencing to save time. While this will reduce the amount of manual work you have to do, you should make sure to spend extra time intelligently designing your spreadsheets to focus on minimizing future errors or problems. Since you'll now be doing a lot of the heavy lifting using automated methods, it's easy to become pretty comfortable and think that everything is working properly. Since errors can easily sneak into your spreadsheets, it is important to build error checking and data checking functionality into your spreadsheets to help you catch any problems when they arise, especially those that would typically go unnoticed. So first, it'll be important to understand the different errors in Excel and the automatic error checking options built in, typically seen by the green triangle in the corner of error cells. So as we go through the errors, you'll notice that actually the first one I put here is not technically an error, usually, as you can tell by the lack of a green triangle in the corner, but it usually means that the column is not wide enough to display the result, and therefore we'll start showing a bunch of number signs in a row. And so you'll see this example formula is the now formula, and if I double click the column separator, it will auto fit the data to the column. And so you can tell that since the now formula has to show both the date and the time, if you make it any smaller than it needs to be, it'll show up as numbers. This can also happen if you have a negative date or a negative time. But usually all you need to do is make sure that the columns are fitted correctly. And what I just did by double-clicking the separator, you can also do if you highlight all of your columns and double-click any of the separators, it will auto-fit every column. Same thing with rows, but that works separately, so you can do either columns or rows. The next error is divided by zero. So in mathematics, you're not able to divide by zero because it doesn't come up with the result. There's no way to mathematically express that, so if you divide anything by zero, you'll come up with this error. This happens a lot if you're taking a number and dividing it by either a blank cell or maybe you're copying a formula across many cells some of which don't have data yet. And you'll see for each of these in this column I have the example output which has the formula in it and in column E you can see what the formula is in the cell. So that way you don't have to click in each cell to see what the formula that I'm referring to is. So in this case it's 1 divided by 0 which will come up as the divided by 0 error. A value error shows up when a formula doesn't work properly because it's expecting you to give it a certain data type and it can't perform the action typically with numbers or um, some sort of a mathematical operator so in my example I take cell E4 which is the divided by zero text and I multiply that by two and since taking the text and multiplying it by two doesn't make any sense it comes up with a value error. The reference error is when a cell results in a reference which doesn't exist. This can also happen if you delete a sheet or a cell reference. You might find this in the middle of a formula because it doesn't have the cell or range which it was originally referring to. So if you're referring to cell C1 in the formula and then you delete the entire C column, you'll likely find a ref error in that formula. In this example, I use the indirect formula to refer to a spreadsheet called blah that doesn't exist, so it comes up with a reference error. The name error, there could be a few reasons for this. Most common is referring to a named range that doesn't exist, like I have here, which is just equals Ben. It doesn't know how to deal with that. If I had a named range called Ben, it would come up with whatever the value is. Also, if you are using a worksheet function that doesn't exist, or using text in a formula without including the double quotation marks around it, it may come up with the name error. The num error is when you're either using an incorrect argument in a worksheet function, so one of the components of the formula is being used incorrectly, or if you have a number that's too large or too small for Excel. So for this example, I'm showing a number that's far too big for Excel to express, which you can see right here, and therefore it comes up with a number error. The NA error, or not available, would be usually when you're using a lookup or a reference function that returns no value. So if you're using a VLOOKUP, for example, my VLOOKUP formula is looking up the number 10 in 
B3 to C10 and returning the second column, but since there's no number 10, it's unable to pull anything, so it comes up with an NA. And null, which you won't see very often, but is if you're using an intersection of two ranges that don't exist. So you can use two ranges with a space in between to grab the intersection of those ranges. So if I did C1 to C10 and A1 to G1, whatever's in C1 would show up because that's the area that intersects the two. But these two ranges, B2 to B10 and D1 to D10, never intersect, so it comes up with a null. You'll see if you scroll down bottom, I have some posts from other websites that refer to the different errors and might give you a little bit more information. And I've also pasted a picture right here of the error checking rules that you can use in Excel, which currently shows what my settings are. But I'll go into the options menu and show you how you can change that. So if you go to File, Options, Formulas, you'll see down bottom there's an error checking rules section. Typically, I leave them all checked except for unlocked cells containing formulas and for formulas referring to empty cells. Most of the other ones come in handy, but you can feel free to add or remove any of the error checking rules depending on what you're using it for. But this goes across all of your workbooks and not just the one you're working with, so make sure you choose the one you want. Sometimes it can be a bit annoying if you're coming up with errors saying an inconsistent formula when that's actually a formula you want. And so if you're getting a green triangle when you don't want to, I'll show you how to get rid of it. But if you have a question about how any of these work, you can highlight this little information area and it'll tell you what the specific errors relate to. So I will hit OK. And now I will go up to my cells that have errors. If you click on any of them, you'll see this little warning label pops up. If you click on that, it'll tell you what the error is, and you have the option of getting help, showing how the calculation works, ignoring the error, which would get rid of the green triangle, editing it, or looking at your error checking options. If you highlight a large range with errors, and you open that up, you can click ignore error, and it will remove the green triangle from all of them which can be useful if these specific cells are working correctly but you still want it to check for that error in general and don't want it to look like there's a problem with the spreadsheet. Typically you would not do that with these error values but you might do it with something like an inconsistent formula which would still come up with a result that isn't an error but gets flagged as an error by Excel. Now I'm going to quickly go back into the options menu under formulas and just wanted to show you that you can change whether or not it actually flags cells that have errors. You can change the color that it is so if you don't like the default green which happens to be my favorite color let's say you wanted it to be orange my second favorite color you could change that there and you can also click reset ignored errors which would theoretically undo the errors that I already had ignored and so if I click this and hit OK, we should see them pop up as orange triangles when I hit OK. So I'll click Reset Ignore the Errors and hit OK. And now you'll see there's this orange triangle in each of the cells. Now I mentioned the if error formula in my logical functions video, but I just quickly wanted to show you an example here of how it works. So for that 1 divided by 0, I can insert into the formula bar if error, open parentheses, the value is whatever you're trying to evaluate. So it could be a reference to another cell, it could be a calculation, and then I'll put a comma, and it says value if error. So if this comes up with an error, which it will, what do I want it to display? I could have that be error in quotes, and then my parentheses, and hit enter, and now you'll see it shows an error. I could have it be two quotes with nothing in between, so it just shows up as blank. And so using the if error formula can help minimize the amount of error results you get. 
And so like I mentioned earlier, if you copied that divided by zero formula that had different cells across a large area, and you wanted it to work in the future, but some of them are currently blank or zero, you could use if error, and once that data populates, the calculation will then show the correct value. So I will change this to be equals one divided by zero. And I want to show you one feature using the find and select option. You can have Excel look through the worksheet or workbook and select only the errors that are visible. So let's go to find and select. You'll go to go to special. And here you can pick all sorts of different things. But if you pick formulas, and we'll get rid of numbers, we'll get rid of text and logicals, so only errors is checked. And I hit OK. You'll see that it highlighted all of the errors. And if I click the highlight button, you could very quickly see where all of the errors are on your sheet. But I'll just control Z that so it's not highlighted. So far I've only really showed you ways of doing error checking with items that Excel views as errors. But we all know that we can have mistakes pop up in some of our reports or our data. And sometimes you need to do a little extra work to make sure you're checking for changes in your data and any unexpected results. So if you go to the Order Data tab, you'll see that I have an Order Data Log. This has just historical orders. You might notice this from the Master Workbook. And so since this is order history, it theoretically shouldn't change. So I've created an error check sheet here. The first area shows current values, and it has the now function so you know what time it was that the current values are being taken from. Here, this table points to the order data sheet and refers to each of the cells that make up the table. Then to the right, I have this frozen values area, which shows a version that is just pasted values of this current area from a former point in time so that we can do comparison. So I've named these ranges. So if you go to order table copy and you hit control C, then go to order table paste, right click and do paste values. And now I have a frozen version of the order table as it stood at the time I froze it. So to the right of this, I have an order table set up with direct comparisons between the two ranges. So this first cell is checking to make sure that L4 is equal to B4. And then I have some conditional formatting to make sure that this shows up as green if it's true and it'll show up as red if it's false. So you'll see that if I scroll throughout the table they're all showing up as true. At the top I've added a count a function which counts the number of cells in the area that are not blank and then I have a count if function here counting to see how many are true. So the number of non-blank cells should match the number of cells that are true if our data hasn't changed. Then I have another direct comparison here, which compares those two numbers to make sure they're true. I also have a sum match at the top, which goes through all the numerical fields, unit, cost, and total, and sums them up between the two tables, the current values and the frozen. Now let's say something happened to my data. So I'll go to the Order Data tab, where my data source is, and let's say someone went back and accidentally changed order number 10,006 from Midwest to New England. And they also changed the units on 10,010 to be 40. Now if I go to my error check sheet and I go to the right, we'll see that it shows me exactly where the changes were made and these areas all show up as false. So it's a pretty easy way of seeing and tracking changes to a range without having to constantly monitor it. You'll see the things that changed are this one when I changed the region of the order and then this units one that I changed affected essentially five different areas. The unit that I'm highlighting currently, it also affected the cost total to the right which is the multiplication of the units times the cost so changing the units affected the total and also these sum matches are now off because the sum of the current values 
over here on the left is not equal to the sum of the frozen values. So those also show up as false. And here you can see there are three items that don't match. And you could do a simple subtraction between these two to see what your current number of changed cells are. And you can do this sometimes to track things that should change, but just so that you know what exactly is changing. And the way I like to use it is not necessarily undoing a table like this, but let's say I have a very complicated spreadsheet with a lot of different moving parts. I'll want to bring in certain numbers or results from various sheets onto an error checking sheet, like let's say the full year profit for a project. I'll bring that number in. I'll bring in the full year profit for another project, and I'll know if anything changes to that number that's somewhere within the project, there was also a change. So you can go either at a very high level or at a very detailed level in some of your data checking options. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea on how you can make sure that your spreadsheets are as free from error as possible and to try to anticipate any problems that could arise by using intelligent data checking and certainly version control. I would advise saving backup copies of certain files that are very important and especially if you're using this error checking method you can have these backups which also have frozen values so you could see what's changed since an older version and there's really a lot of power in knowing very quickly what has changed within a spreadsheet. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I look forward to doing some more.